The plays that we ran in the NFL was called the Flash Package, Golden Flash, for my college, the Kent State. Nice. I literally drew out the plays that we ran in the NFL and presented them to coach. So the ball wasn't going to end zone, I had to make a split decision to pick the ball up. And as soon as I did, I'm thinking to myself, I can't panic. So to be in the top tier of the best of the best, that was confirmation on a job well done for me. Hello again and welcome to another installment of Club 46, driven by Bridgestone. I'm Jay Crawford and I am thrilled to be joined by one of the great return men in the history of the National Football League. These numbers are just incredible. Eight times he took kickoffs the distance for scores. That's more than any other player in NFL history. Three punt returns for touchdowns, over 11,000 return yards in his career. That's third all-time Josh Cribbs. Welcome to Club 46. Great to see you. Thank you for having me. I really how, appreciate it. How have you been? You look like you could still get out there and play. That is the plan, to look <laughs> like I could still do it, but these knees are gone. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, you are, and, and probably will be for many years, a, uh, a fan favorite um, from really the first time you put on a Browns uniform. These fans loved the way you approached the game. What was it, Josh, that you think the Browns fan base found so appealing about you and the way you play? Well, being able to embody what they are as fans and who they are to identify, um, not being drafted, not giving the big bucks, having to work for every dime that I made coming from Kent State. It's a lot of people uh, from Northeast Ohio that went to Mac schools. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they identify with me, being able to be the blue collar worker on the football team, to work for everything and then come out on top, you know, as, you know, to emerge to one of the, you know, star, supposedly one of the star athletes on the football team. Not supposedly, you were, you were. <laughs> what are some of your favorite memories playing football for the Cleveland Browns? Well, one in particular um, was beating the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, and, and I say that um, and my heart tingles <laughs> because, <laughs> because it's something that our fans truly want. I hear it every day, you know, I live here in Cleveland and. Um, I hear from the fans on a regular basis, you know, and it's all about beating that team next to us, that, uh, the city, the state next to us. And um, to do that in our home, in our home stadium uh, was tremendous for our fans. We, uh, that year, you know, we weren't that good. We didn't have a winning record, but all was well when we beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. Josh Cripps told me after the San Diego game, when I asked him, what would it mean if you knocked off the Steelers here on Thursday night? He said we could turn to our fans and I think they would say to us, we forgive you for what has happened this season. I think we only won six games that year, but one of them was the Pittsburgh Steelers. All was right in the universe when we did so. Yeah. So that was a good memory. Well, we have a little, uh, a little piece of memorabilia over here. That's the game ball yes. from that game presented to you. It's got yeah. the score, 13-6. You were the Offensive Player of the Week. What did you do on the field that made you the Offensive Player of the Week and the recipient of the game ball? Wildcat, baby. <laughs> all day Wildcat. You know, and we, when we talk about all day ball, you know, um, if something wasn't broke, you know, we weren't going to try to fix it. Yeah. You know, running the Wildcat down their throat in our stadium amongst our fans was one of my greatest memories to be at the helm at quarterback to earn that right, you know, um, to play so good on special teams that the coordinator was like, man, just put them out there and give them the ball. <laughs> and that's exactly what they did. They put me out there and just snapped me the ball, run right, run left, you know, fake right, go left, you know, and it was just those simple plays. And we was gonna, they knew the play and we was gonna challenge them to stop it. And we overcame it. And they couldn't stop and it. And they could not stop it. There's very few guys that I've seen play the game that I feel you could almost plug this person in anywhere and he's not going to look out of place. And I don't know that there are many guys that I've seen in the NFL that I can put in that category. But I literally believe you could have played in every position group on the field. Right. Why is that? Well, ball was life for me, you know. Um, even in Pop Warner, I would play quarterback and running back. Um, you know, Pop Warner, you go both ways, play safety, you know, play linebacker. And, you know, it was, it was second nature for me, 
you know, for special teams to, to see all that come out, you know, because on coverage, you see ball, get ball. I never really had to get coached on how to tackle. I just put the guy on the ground. Like, you don't have to tell me how to get this guy on the ground. You just had it instinctively. I get this guy on the ground. Okay. <laughs> By any means necessary. <laughs> I came into the game. Romeo Cornell said, if you can beat a double vice, run down and make a tackle on an NFL kick return, a punt returner, you got a spot on the team. I was like, that's it? Beat a double vice? Heck yeah, I'm going to do that. What's a double vice? <laughs> like, that's, that was my mentality. Like, I'm going to make this team because I'm going to beat a double vice. But first, let me know what a double vice is <laughs> so I can beat it. But that's the mentality I had. You didn't have to tell me to tackle, how to tackle, how to put my head on this side of the shoulder. And it, I'm like, this guy can get on the ground. So even when different coaches came with different philosophies of me, how to return, how to tackle, this and that, they left me alone. They say, man, he's making all the tackles. Oh, yeah, he's getting all the returns. So really, all they'd have to do is tell you what the mission was, not necessarily what the technique was. Here's the mission. Josh will figure it out. And that's how I go. That's how I went throughout my career. Here's the play. We run this sweep this way. We run this return left. Is that desire, you think? I think it is. I think um, if you, it's a, football is the biggest team sport. And the team that wins is the team that can get the most people on that team to buy, to buy in to one goal of who wants the, who wanted the most. How many of those guys wanted the most compared to how many of your guys wanted the most? And it's, everybody's good. It's the best of the best. But how many of your 11 on 11 wanted better than their 11? Wow. Yeah. And, and to what degree can it be measured? So I wanted it so bad that anybody I was going against, like they had to game tackle me every time. Oh, I'm dragging this guy for five extra yards. And that was a mission too. After contact, how many yards do you gain? Like how, how is the defense preparing for you? Like do the coach gloss over, yeah, this is a such and such returner. No, I made sure that if somebody tackled me, you're gonna have a load to take down because ball was life for me. Take us back to the early years. What, what was Josh Cribbs like growing up in, in D.C.? Well, I, I, like I said, um, baseball was my first sport. Um, Were you better at baseball I, than football? I was a better baseball player. Actually, um, I had one of my good friends. Um, we had a tryout. Um, I was 11th grade. He was a 12th grader. And we had a trial for um, Anaheim and uh, for the Angels. Yes. As like a I was, junior in high school. Yes. I was a big time baseball. I traveled all over the country playing baseball. And um, I was a better baseball player. He was a better football player. Well, he got, he got, the, he got an opportunity. He, they offered him a contract in high school. And I, I'm thinking back now, maybe because he was a senior, but that, I was kind of hurt because of that because right. I was a better uh, baseball player. And so I took my scholarship to Kent and I was upset. So I had to see my friend. Um, come to come to school with fresh clothes on off of his con. He got a twenty thousand dollars co contract, and they they were looking for just one player out of like, I want to say it was like eighty guys out there training. Wow! And they picked him, and he left that like you know during the season he left, had a twenty thousand dollars scholarship. I mean twenty thousand dollar contract signing bonus. Right. Come to school with new new shoes on every day and this and that. I'm like, and then he went off and played baseball. Yeah. And I went off and played. What um, position football. did you play? I was a pitcher. Wow. I caught, and by my main spots were shortstop and third. So just like football, you did put, put him out there anywhere. He's gonna I get it, it done. All. I did it all, and and that was that was um, me again being that ball was life. And do you have any regrets that you didn't pick baseball because football turned out wonderfully for you? Yes. But if you were actually better in baseball, you could still be playing baseball, and your body would have a lot fewer miles on I, it. That's why I'm pushing my son to be more of a baseball than football. Right. Is I think that everything happened for a reason. I think that, um, you know, I was pushed into it. Fate pushed me into football because that's where I would get that platform. That's where I would shine the most and have the most fun. Um, and I, I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. I, um, looking back at it, you know, I still love baseball. Even, you know, when I have the opportunity to throw out the first pitch here and there, I'm like, man, I could do this, man. Yeah. I, this is me, you know, and um, being able to, you know, go out and practice at Kent State you know, with the guys, and that was one of the tools that Kent State used to recruit me, was um, they knew I was a baseball player, and Kent had a good baseball team that would go to the, the um, tournament every year, sure. the NCAA tournament, so they like, hey, sure, he can play baseball too, and you know, that's just what they tell, you know, recruits, yeah. like, hey, he can play that too, knowing that I couldn't, you know, just the amount Once of Once you get into the had. time constraints right. for it's, football, are exactly. yeah, too demanding. So, it, it was just a tool they used to recruit me. So my friend actually got, he went off and played baseball. I took my football scholarship to Kent. 
And then from there, it was it was all she I was all thinking about um, football. But I was a baseball, basketball. I swam. I let it in swimming. How does a kid from D.C. end up at Kent State? That's a funny story. We, um, in order to get our guys recruited, my coach scheduled games out of the state. So we played in New York, and we played two games in Ohio every year. We would play against um, Chardon, and we would play against St. Ignatius. Wow. And um, it was one year St. Ignatius ranked like second in the nation and they had a few all-americans there so we knew all a lot of i guess my coach knew that uh colleges would be looking at them that's smart so because they we, were always exactly there. but we had you know nfl talent on our team so we came in i was like man we're good we was beating everybody so we was playing st ignatius and um i remember my first time dropping back to my throw it to my uh, wide receiver daryl diary who already committed his junior year to arizona state ran a 4-3 and I, he was running as fast as he could. I dropped back with my, I say I had a highly touted big time arm. And I, mean, I threw it, must, must have threw it like 50 yards. And I'm looking at it in the air. And then I see that cornerback come out of nowhere and bat it down. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is about to be a game. And I knew right then and there, it's about to be a game. Well, we lost, we ended up losing 24 to uh, 20, no, 14 to 28. But it was a hard fought game. And from that game, Kent offered me a full scholarship while I was getting on the bus. And um, they, you know, pulled me to the side, talked to me and everything. Like, man, we, you are who we want on this field. You know, we saw everybody on this field, both teams. We want you. And um, I brought my, my college, my uh, high school receiver with me, you know, and it was just, it just worked out ever so. And I never thought I would be out in Ohio sure. you know, from that game. Yeah. I actually lived, lived like eight minutes from the high school that we played at, that I was offered a scholarship. Wow. Lived eight minutes from that high, from that uh, that stadium in Byersfield over there in Parma. And I never thought that I would be in that area. Like, I, as a kid, I'm like, man, this is the middle of nowhere, like yeah. in Ohio. And then now I live over there, you know, and, spend my, and play professional ball in that same state. When, when you look back at your path, and, and you talk about being an undrafted free agent yeah. coming to Cleveland, did the Browns show you interest? Did you did you have any inkling that it was going to be the Browns or that anybody was going to uh, sign you as an undrafted free agent? So I had a workout with the Washington Redskins mm -hmm. at quarterback. And um, I did really good. I went in with the other quarterback that they brought in was Zach Mills from Penn mm -hmm. State. Yeah. Um, I outshined him. Um, I had big time receivers there. Sean Merriman was the linebacker that was there. And also, and we had a lot of talent out there on the field, but I shine bright, and I, I was a bright shining star. I ran a 4-4 four, four, um, twice, and they called me back into the office, talked to the um, quarterback coach, the, the head coach, and I had several meetings with them that day. And they were just, you know, explaining to me before the draft, like, man, I know you're from Washington, D.C. It'll be tough because this is where you're from, but you'll have to, you know, have your, you know, they had these talks with me that sure. led me to believe, like, you know, so if we take you in the later rounds, you know, you got to come here and you got to, you know, you handle business. They spoke to my agent, and I'm thinking all is well in the universe. So I went to, I had a, um, the Las Vegas Bowl. I played in that, and uh, the Red, the uh, Browns scout was there. And he said, man, if anybody looking at you a quarterback, they trying to use you as a camp body. They want you to come in as, in camp, and they're not serious. Did you believe that? I didn't know what to believe, he, but he said these words to me. We want you to come in and play returner right now. And you can play. I was, and I was thinking. I You'd never, never done that. it, so you I, had to be. And that's what I was thinking. I've never, I never played returner. And he's like, well, you'll play returner, and your position would be wide receiver. And, I, and so for that Las Vegas Bowl, I was trained to be a wide receiver. So I'm looking at all the other receivers on how to, how to line up, how to position my hands, thinking about how I used to do it back in the day, looking at Peter Ward, and I'm thinking like, all right, my friends used to always do this with their hands when they line up. And I'm trying to trying to behave like a, a a wide receiver, but it wasn't quite catching. So I remember the scout saying, "Yeah, catch some punts." I never done that before, so I'm like, "How do you catch punts back here? Just catch the ball and run?" <laughs> so those things were going through my mind. And the first call I got after the draft was from the Cleveland Browns. It was uh, Terry Rubisky, and he was like, "Man, we you know we want you to come in as a priority free agent, pay you five thousand dollars." Want you to come in and compete. They ha they have plans for you. They want you to make this football team. It's not going to be easy, but if you up for the challenge, we'll love to have you. Those are the words he said to me, and I was up for the challenge. Just to get that call from a team right down the street. Yeah. Were there everything. other teams calling? After that, 
So after. I, I agreed to go to the, uh, to the to go to the Browns, and then Buffalo Bills called. And then I'm like, nah, I thought the Redskins was called. So I, I just like, you know, I already agreed to go. This to the is kind of like your college recruitment, really. Yes, yes. But the Browns had already laid out a path that no other team laid out for me. Just like Kent State. Just like Kent State. And it was, it was familiar to me. I was familiar with the path they laid out. It was, you're going to do this. It's going to be hard. You're going to do this. Yeah. And everybody else is just like, come. We want to invite you to camp, like an invite. Like, we want you to watch practice. It wasn't like I was going to actually play, so I made the decision to go to the Cleveland Browns. It's a pretty good decision. Yes. Worked out well. Definitely. You had a solid rookie season, and then something unlikely happened. It does, doesn't happen very often. You're an undrafted free agent. I imagine you had a one-year contract. Yeah. They come to you and say, Josh, we want to sign you to a six-year extension. And you say what? Heck yeah. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. Yeah. So I was on a rookie deal and, you know, uh, I, I felt like I was having a pretty good season. And, you know, um, just listening to my coaches, I remember Maurice Carthon would say, all right, you scored one. You know, uh, it's the NFL is what have you done for me lately? Yeah. Like, man, it's time for another one. Or you want, or they going to bring somebody else in here. So stuff like that, you know, I, I kept in my mind, like, dang, I did only score one. And he was like, man, that was weeks ago. What else you got? Wow. Like, we seen that, you know, so I was always thinking that I was like, I got to score another touchdown. So every time I had a chance to touch the ball, I'm like, I got to score and or I'm going to be gone. <laughs> so that was the that was the threat I had consistently. Like, man, I got to score. Or I'm going to be out of here. Like that one touchdown ain't do nothing. And I, so I would get like maybe 35, 40 yards of return, which was good, but I didn't score. So I'm like, man, I have to score. Or I'm going to be out. So that drove me and I was. Even though they saw me as, hey, this guy's doing good. He's getting these, busting these returns left and right. But in my mind, I didn't score. I wasn't scoring. So I'm like, they going to have somebody else. So once they came to me, I was like, oh, heck yeah. You know, without the knowledge of how the NFL truly works. You thought at the time six years is six yes. solid years. No. Six, six, six years. I'm like, man, that's six years. Guaranteed. They can't do it. Like, get. So I didn't know how the NFL worked. I, I even thought that I could be on a practice squad forever. Yeah. And I thought there was 22 guys on the practice squad, a whole offense and a whole <laughs> defense. Like, man, I, so I came in like, if I could just be on a practice squad, that could be my career. That could be my life, practicing, you know, helping them prepare. <laughs> right. So I didn't even know that. So when they said, you know, the contract, I didn't think anything was wrong with it. Um, six years, $2 million signing bonus. Man, I was, I heard $2 million. You were in. I was in. I was like, man, do I sign today or can I sign tonight? They were like, yeah, it's 10 o'clock at night, man. We can do it in the morning. <laughs> like, you would have signed it right then. Yes, because in my mind, that's, that's, that's making it. Yeah. You know, that was making the big bucks. For my first year in the NFL, I didn't even have direct deposit. I went to the bank. The lady was like, do you want a direct deposit? I was like, no, I want to see all that. <laughs> so, so you got it in cash. I was cashing $8,000 checks. And I was like, man, and they were looking at me like, uh, okay. You sure you want to leave yeah, with all this sure money? Yeah, you sure you want to do that? You know, so it's not until my second year I started to actually become an NFL professional at, you know, getting checks and direct deposit. But the novelty of it was pretty fun. It was. I didn't think it would last forever. So I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to be here because I didn't score. I only scored one touchdown. <laughs> so I'm not sure I'm going to be here anymore. So, so I'm, I'm going to enjoy fun. these checks. I'm going to enjoy these checks. Were you pushing to the coaches, let me run yes. the wildcat, let me throw the football, let me do this let stuff? Me, let me tell you what I did. During meetings, during downtime, I drew up things that I ran in college. Um, packages, option passes, and plays, and trick plays that we ran in co college. Option, and this and this and It that. looked awfully wildcat. The plays that we ran in the NFL was called the flash package. Golden flash for my college, the Kent State. Nice. I literally drew out the plays that we ran in the NFL and presented them to coach. And when it got to that point in the season, he, let me look at them plays. And those are the plays that we ran. I wow. literally drew them up. Even the play that we ran against um, the Patriots, we call it a splash special, where the offensive line will, came up and they just stood straight up. I reversed out, handed to him, and then I ran a reverse out there acting like I had the ball. And Chancey, I really gave it to that first guy. Well, we ran that play in college. And I told everybody in the NFL, I drew it up for the coaches. 
and then we ran it and we scored against the Patriots in in the NFL. So it was <laughs> that let me know that once I started having success on special teams, that gave me validity. Sure. That gave me validity. This kid can play. To, and, the, and for them to listen to me. What I'd really like to do is uh, go down to your office. I'd like to go down on the field and really pick your brain uh, about what it takes to be a great return man. Gotcha. And I also want you to take us through some of your great returns. You good awesome. with that? Yes. All right, let's, let's go. Let's do it. Read into the ball, and he lines it down the field. It bounces, and Cripps had it bounce off him. That's a live ball. Back by the goal line. He's got to come out with it. He's to the five. He angles. He's up the sideline. He's still running. He's got blockers in front. Five. Touchdown! Joshua Cripps turns disaster into a score. Unbelievable run. An effort by Joshua Cripps. Being a, a returner in the NFL is is not for the faint of heart. Um, you're standing back there, the ball's in the air, and you've got 11 guys zeroing in on you. Give me the three biggest attributes it takes to be a great return man in, in the National Football League. First of all, having a vision. You know, knowing you know where guys are going to be. You know, you know the play, you know you ran it in practice, understanding that you have to make downhill cuts. So I'll say the big, biggest three things is knowing the opposition. One thing that made me a great return is that I knew what the opponents were going to do. The twos on the kickoffs are contained guys. The threes and fours are ball guys. The fives are going to chase you around the field no matter where you got. So knowing that research, knowing what their responsibilities is, I could run at a two and he wouldn't try to engage me. His job is to contain me. So knowing what they're gonna do, their responsibilities yeah. was one aspect of it. Knowing that I had to make downhill cuts, that this was a kickoff, that I wasn't gonna be able to juke. It was too many people that I had to, you know, juke out in order to score. So to make downhill cuts and knowing that the window was gonna close if I didn't hit the hole immediately. So each play on the kickoff is made just to get through the hole. And then after that, it's, on, it's, it's all up to you. Your want to and will to succeed. If everything goes right on the kickoff return, the ball will just reach to the, the 25 or the 30. That means the defense, the kickoff team did their job, and the, and the kick return team did their job. The ball will get to the 25, 30 every single time. There are two plays that, that for me and for most Browns fans, we'll never forget. One was in Pittsburgh in 2007. The ball bounces off you at about the 10 yard line and you end up picking it up at the one. That, that was, I still watch that video and I expect you to be tackled every single time. Take us through that play. What was, what was, that, what was going on in your mind and, and, and how did you end up taking it the distance? The first thing was I knew that they were gonna try to kick it away. I had success against them the year before, uh, the games before. So I knew that they were gonna be doing these squib kicks. So I was running over there ready, but they, the ball was going, was like a knuckle ball, and it hit off my pad. And I'm thinking, wow, the ball still has momentum going. I can make it go in the end zone, calm down. I was thinking, calm down, you can do this. So the ball wasn't going to end zone. I had to make a split decision to pick the ball up. And as soon as I did, I'm thinking to myself, I can't panic. In that moment, I kind of had confirmation at that point that Man, everything gonna be all right. It's everything slowed down, so I picked up the ball. And you got it right, basically, as it's about to touch the, the goal line. I mean, I was in the end zone, and the ball. I was like, "Come on, come on!" And the ball wouldn't come all the way, <laughs> so I, I didn't think that it was gonna go in. And everybody, they could have came down. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I gotta take this out. So I grabbed the ball, and by that time, you know, it seemed like their whole team was on me, and I just remember like. I just can't get tackled back here. I don't even remember how I did that. I had to see it on tape to see all the moves that I made. But I know I made some hard cuts. Guys went sliding this way. I ran forward. Guys went sliding this way. I, I made another move. And then I saw it. I saw the kicker. And that was the greatest thing that an NFL punt returner or kick returner can see is the kicker. And he didn't want no part of this. And I had blockers in front. And I remember uh, Sean Thompson just coming, knocking him out, and him just doing, flailing his arms. 
And from then on, it was over. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm about to score a touchdown in Pittsburgh. I mean, and even after it, I can't even explain how it happened or why it happened. The other one that really comes to mind was Kansas City, uh, December game, cold. First quarter, late first quarter, scores tied. This is a run that I really, I've watched this a number of times and every time I'm just in absolute awe of what you were able to do. That has to be one of your career highlights, if not number one. Take us through that return. Yeah, so it was a, it was a basic, basic middle return. Caught the ball, nice and easy. I'm going up there, I'm making moves and, and, and spinning off guys. And it's like, man, they can't tackle me, man. I feel like I was skiing out there. I'm switching the ball. It's like Tecmo Bowl. And, and I'm running, I'm like, man, this is easy. And my teammates are sprinting in front of me to block for me and to be in the end zone to sprint and, and to just cheer with me. And it was like, it was nothing. I knew in that moment that, man, it just wasn't me. My guys were just so excited for me to succeed. It was confirmation that once everybody was going towards the same goal, like you couldn't stop us. It was amazing. I don't even know how I did that. Like I said, I keep having to go back to the film to see like, man, how did I do that? I'm like, I don't even remember spinning. Like wow. these things, and I keep telling people, I don't have moves, it's just reaction. And when you, but when you have a team like that, that that's so die hard for each other, anything can happen. Ah! Ah! Let's go, I'm gonna do the damn thing. Let's go. Cripps takes the snap, and he fakes a handoff. He darts right, inside the 10, cuts left five, cuts right, touchdown! So because of moments like the ones you just showed us on the field, you get this symbol of greatness. Tell us about that. My first Pro Bowl. Just uh, this became confirmation, more of a token of confirmation that I was the best. You know, um, not just making it to the NFL, but becoming the best at what I did. Um, being able to master playing in the NFL and then realizing my role and then becoming the best at it. I used to see other punt returners and kick returners, coverage guys, and look at their stats game by game. Uh, Devin Hester was in the game. He was getting high uh, accolades. He was one of the top guys. Um, Kasim Osgood, one of the good cover guys. So I was looking at all their stats and saying, okay, this is what I got to beat. <laughs> this is what I got to top to be in the NFL, to be in the Pro Bowl. So every week I would look at their stats and then compare it with mine and say, oh, yeah, I did it. Yeah. And so other weeks I'm like, oh, man, they, they had more than me. I got to up my game to be among the greatest athletes in the NFL. The NFL is the best of the best. So to be in the top tier of the best of the best, that was confirmation on a job well done for me. As you look back on your NFL career, you've accomplished so much, proved all the naysayers wrong. If you had to write a couple of paragraphs to describe your NFL career, how would that go? Man. Um, I'm sure I could do it more than a couple paragraphs. It would take more than a couple to do it justice. <laughs> but just uh, from the back door to the front door. Wow. It's a good know, title. Uh, yes. And, you know, being undrafted, that says a lot. For my name to be put in dry erase, that they could easily go up there with a, a handkerchief or a napkin and erase my name off the, lo off the locker. You know, to, to, to be yelled at so much by the coaches and feel like, man, this NFL thing not for me. To go through all that darkness only to come out through the light on the other side, that's confirmation. You know, I think that could be the title, confirmation. Yeah. That my life wasn't a letdown. That's the story of my life. Wanting it so bad that I went out there and grabbed it, not using anything for an excuse. I never wanted, wanted to have a what if moment. Mm. What if I would have did this? What if I would have did that? So I prepared to not have a what if moment. I ran on this road in the snow. I trained every day. My wife came to me after our tryout for the Browns. She was like, is it it now? Cause we gotta, you know, we gotta start working. Wow. I was gonna end up having to work at a, an atomic box factory in Aurora, a temp job. 
just to, you know, earn money. She was like, is it it? I'm like, yeah, if I don't get a call back, you know, I guess I can, you know, that'll be it. But I got the call back. And it wasn't it. And it wasn't it. Do you allow yourself to think about the possibility of one day putting on that gold jacket in Canton because your contribution to the game, and you, because you mentioned you're, you're tackling guys on special teams, you're busting touchdowns on special teams, you played quarterback, wide receiver, running back. There should be a spot for the versatile football player. Do you see that perhaps happening one it, day? It definitely should be. I think I see it. Um, when you look at the Devin Hesters, if you look at us being you know, the, the return kings, um, if you look at my record being elected to the 2000 All-Decade team, um, being um, you know, elected into the you know, 100 top players in the NFL, and all the acc accolades, I can make the case for myself. You know, um, being a threat at Wildcat. Like I said, the level of difficulty that teams had to prepare for me on, on special teams all around and on offense once I played. You know, um, to do it at such a high level, to play all those positions, I could make the case for myself. I'm sure fans could as well. What would that mean to you? Um, you played football in the shadow of, of Canton when you were at Kent. Um, what would it mean for that to ultimately be the ending place for your career? You know, my jersey is there. My mom said, you know, um, I ran two touchdowns back in one, um, one game to break my own record. And um, they asked my, for me to donate my jersey and my cleats. So my mom took issue with that. She wanted them? She, no, she said, the jersey and cleats, what about the person inside the jersey <laughs> and the cleats? She was like, you the one that did it. Why they want the jersey? They need to just put you in there. And, and I didn't know what to say to her, to defend why not. When I look at the players, they're the greatest players at what they did. They were the best at what they did. That's why they get that honor of being a Hall of Fame. You know, how can you have athletes like myself, a returner, a cover guy? I was the best at it. I was the best at it, especially all around. So why why wouldn't a guy like myself be considered for that, or Brian Mitchell type guy? I remember when I made the NFL, I beat out a guy named David Olson who was a returner slash, he was a quarterback in, in college, but a returner, kick return and punt return. What separated me from him is that I tackled two. So I made tackles inside the 20 all through preseason, and I went back to the sideline all hooping and hollering. He looked at me and was like, you tackled two? <laughs> like, man, I don't have no shot. So to be able to, to beat double vices, run down there, tackle greats, Dante Halls, I tackled Randall Lell, Reggie Bush, Deshaun Jackson, the best ever to ever do it. Hester tackled the, the greatest athletes to ever return balls. They never tackled you. And they haven't tackled me. I did it the best on that end and the best on this end. So why not? Case made. Why not make I, it? I, I, hope, I hope that happens. Josh, thanks so much. We enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Please join us next week on Club 46, driven by Bridgestone, when we'll be joined by another all-time great Cleveland Brown. We'll see you then.